All right, welcome to the Championship University results, or rather, prediction Iggy, show. Iggy, Iggy. Sorry, there was a bug right in my face. <laughs> you don't get to talk first. I'm the champion of Championship University. I put the champ in champ you. I am the you of champ you. Do you get me? We are here today, folks to bring you our predictions for AEW's Double or Nothing this Saturday night. Iggy, tell me all your wrong answers so I can stomp you again. All right, let's get on it. Because I lost last time, uh, I had another punishment, but our ongoing punishment is I got to make the first prediction on each of these. So uh, first of all, let me double check that the stream is capturing both of our audio. Just quick test. All right, let's get on it. Because I lost okay. And put on the chat. Okay, so we got everything set up here. So we're going to go down from the beginning to the end. And the card I had has Private Party versus Best Friends for the buy-in. So for that one, I'm going to say they've been really pushing the Best Friends. But as we know, Private Party is a really, really strong tag team. And they could use a push coming back. So, hmm, ah, uh, I think Private Party is gonna take this one. I'm that's my, that's mine, Private Party. Mm, mm. So, on being the elite, they're still feuding with Hangman Page. Hmm, right. And this is not a. Is this a contender match? Uh, nope. This is just the buy-in. Yeah, so if this were a contender match, I would say yeah, because that puts them in line to fight Hangman Page. Along, with... are you sure that's not a contender match? I, I don't think in this card I saw. Let me double check. So I'm pretty sure that's a buy-in match. Or a... yeah, pre-show. Sure oh no, nope, that is a contendership for the tag title. So. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's going to be best friends. Hmm. Okay. Uh, simply because they've been getting the push. They've been getting the uh, attention. Private party's been quarantined. They haven't been able to show up. Uh, not that they had to. I'm just saying because they couldn't, they don't have the momentum going in. Um. Mark Quinn looked really good on Dark this week. But I think, all things considered, mm, because it's a contendership match, and they are feuding with Hangman Page, I don't think they're going to win here. I think that's going to play out somewhere else. I think that's going to stay just on BTE. I don't think that's going to come into play at all on Dynamite or on the main show. So... I gotta say, honestly, like the 
knowing that it's a contendership now, I'm even more confident about my choice on that. I'm definitely saying private party. Okay. Okay. I'm still going with uh, the best friends. All right. So we got best friends on that. And to be clear, actually, while we're still this early on, Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. uh let's decide on what the punishment is going to be for the loser here. Ooh, good idea. Now my my thing, and this might be a little iffy, but l- let me let me run an idea by you. Uh, it's double or nothing, gambling. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna say that the loser has to do some real money gambling in some form. I don't believe any casinos are open right now, but online mm-hmm. blackjack or something. Bet a certain mm. amount. Mm. What do you think? Sure. Okay. We're going to go with a minimum, like a set limit. Yeah, and you can keep going if you want to. But uh, yeah, let's say, oh, I don't know. Ten bucks. Ten bucks? Okay, I was going to say 20, so let's go 10. Because, well, hold on, let's see. Uh... Double or nothing, uh, fight for the fallen, fighter fest, all out, or not all. Uh, what came after fighter fest? Was it full gear? Uh, after fighter fest, I think was all out. No, no, no we haven't had a was all out. Yeah, all out. Then fight for the or full gear. Full gear. Yeah. And then earlier we had revolution, and now. Double or nothing, too. Mm-hmm. That's only six. I was going to say one dollar for each pay-per-view we've had. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with ten. Let's Ten's go good. ten. Ten, ten is, a, is a fun amount. And as as always, if it's not fun, you should not be spending real money. Oh, it's ten for Preston Vance, who apparently you didn't know that was his fucking name until last I night. I haven't been watching Dark, all right? I need I need to catch up. I'm that's gonna Would be have taken most two of what I'm seconds doing. of googling. Listen, listen. You are my Google yo, when it comes yo. to wrestling. Because if I just AJ send you a... messaged me in the middle of the first match last night, it's like, do you think it's, he's gonna be a like big name reveal? It's gonna be like a huge name. Oh, it's Preston Vance. Listen, all I know <laughs> is if I don't know it, it will take it will take one message to you to immediately clear it up. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be something from like. 200 years ago and i'm just like what was this about and you'll just you'll come at me with an entire encyclopedia <laughs> yeah did, did you see the uh the gift that went around the other day of like the oldest known footage of a wrestling match i didn't no oh uh, it was just like a short gif and yeah it looked like an old wrestling match but it was really neat to see it's the oldest known about footage between a French and a German wrestler. Hmm. Yeah, right, I'll because as people will learn, and if we ever actually release the Championship University show, <laughs> it'll take a while. But uh, a lot of there, what... There, there's no show. We're just making this shit up. It's all just a prediction show. There's audio, man. I might just start doing it as a podcast until I could eventually do it as like a best of thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to work it out, honestly. But... um. Yeah, like it a lot of like what modern wrestling is started in France, surprisingly. Mhm. In uh traveling circuses. Yeah. Mhm. All right. That's why it's called Carney. Yeah. The yeah. secret language is Carney. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, moving on to the next fight, we got Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears, which got one promo's worth of build. Yeah, one promo's worth of build. And, uh, we might get more tomorrow night on their show that they're doing on TNT, but I'm not tuning in for it. I've got everything I need. Yeah, I uh, it, it seems fine. I don't know. I kind of I kind of soured to Dustin a little bit with the uh, with the way he was acting in Revolution. Like mm-hmm. on one hand, like trying to rile up Jake Hager, but like the the kissing the other guy's wife thing is really. T- kind of tasteless. I-, I mean, it always was, but like we're even more aware of how like that's that's a little gross. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, defense of it I saw was they thought of it as a 
call back to gold dust's early days i'm like that's not something you really want to call back to that's that yeah that's my thing is like it's clearly like a callback to older sort of things that would happen but like that's yeah that's that's something we could let die and we really should have like i i i've kind of soured to him coco's completely soured to dustin after that yeah so he's still being pushed as the face and i don't know if i buy that he retired after that match with the murder hawk but i think i'm i feel like that was um that was sean trying to talk trash yeah it just it felt kind of flat uh so who you got for this one I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking Dustin because they are still trying to push him as a face, and they've really been like building up Sean as just somebody that really, really needs a kick in the pants more than like a lot of the other heels right now. Like it, he's not like evil in any kind of way, but he's just such a such a shithead that you're just like we really need to see him get take down at least one like big match. I feel like this would be the one. So I'm. Not that it's necessarily what I want, but I think Dustin is winning this one. Um, Sean Spears, since all this, uh, since the Steve Carino outbreak of stealing the uh, Wrestle Talk phrase, yeah. for those of you who don't know, Steve Carino is a bit of a legend in wrestling. Uh, but he was never like a top guy in like WWE, so a lot of people won't know him. But Steve Carino is uh, currently on a rampage suplexing people. Uh, somewhere around like 97,000 right now have been suplexed to death. And uh, he's suplexed over a million in the United States alone. Started suplexing back in February. <clears throat> you get it? Yeah. So, uh, Sorry, Steve Carino. Like a bug in here. What? Can... So, ever since uh, Steve Carino went on his suplexing rampage, um,. We've not seen Tully Blanchard with Sean Spears. Oh, I mean, that might just be for safety's reasons. Yes, it, it absolutely is, and it's why I was kind of iffy on uh, Arn and Jake being in the ring together last night. Yeah, but, but I mean, here's the thing: AEW is testing talent, testing everybody that goes in and out. Two day tests involved before each filming so they are being safe but it's an unnecessary risk that's the thing is like i i saw on john oliver like they were talking about WWE's how wwe's not yeah yeah wwe is doing crap but then at the end is just a side note they were like also AEW and i think ring of honor they said we're doing that and it's like yeah ring but a canceled shows AEW is like they said another promotion i can't remember which but AEW is being as safe as possible and i feel mm -hmm. like they're not forcing anybody to do this no no that's why private party hasn't been on until now that's why hangman page hasn't been on until now uh tony khan is a lot more relaxed about this kind of stuff than vince mcmahon is and i'm not going to sit here and bash wwe but i will say that the events of this past month and a half are enough that i'll never watch another wwe show again yeah. There's no, there's no match they can book. There's no talent they could bring in. There's nothing they could do right now that will get me to watch anymore. Because, and somebody was like, "Well, what do you think that's going to do? That's just going to make uh, they're not going to punish anybody at the top. That's going to punish everybody at the bottom. You know, that's going to punish the talent." I'm like, they're not testing anybody for the coronavirus right now. They're already punishing that talent by putting their lives at risk yeah cruel and unusual punishment honestly and uh somebody was saying well they check your temperature before you come in like you can still be asymptomatic and or carry th it. Th that's the thing is that it takes two weeks to develop symptoms so they could still be infected and not be showing symptoms yet so and it comes yeah. down to tony khan is just a much better businessman than mm -hmm. vince mcmahon because Vince McMahon is like, we have to have the product no matter what. Whereas Tony Khan is like, long term, if I get all my all of my talent who are my business, sick, hurt, dead, any of that, I'm not gonna have a business for very long. So like it's it's important that he look out for them, make sure they're cared for so that they can 
do what they do for as long as they can, as happily as possible, so they're doing everything the best they can, peak performance. Yeah. Just, let's it's let's come stuff. back to WWE at the end of all this, because I have... Oh yeah, I have some I have some things to say. So uh, with that, we'll put a pin in that. So my my prediction, right? Sean Spears, when he was in the company we were just discussing, that got he his gimmick was Ty Dillinger. He was the perfect ten. That's why perfection with a ten for I and O. He was called a good hand. He was. Uh, never given a proper push. He was there for years. He was there for years and years. Uh, you can go back and find like an old, late aughts, early tens, uh, video of Shawn Michaels doing the DX reunion thing with Triple H, and uh, they they're like, uh, Shawn Michaels is angry that they're called safe now because they're not edgy. So he just super kicks the first person he sees, and it happens to be Sean Spears, mm. dressed as like a, a a guy, just you know carrying papers backstage. So he didn't come to AEW to be a good hand. He didn't come to AEW to be a jobber again, and so far he's not been that, but he is dangerously close to just being Ty Dillinger part two. So I think Dustin can take a loss. I think Dustin doesn't need a win. Uh, I think Sean does, and I think Sean can't take another loss or he's on a slippery slope. That That is true, yeah. At this point, if he takes another loss... He kind of is just going to be considered a jobber, so. Yeah. Uh, they You don't pair somebody with Tully Blanchard because you have plans for them to be a jobber. I think this is the beginning of a new storyline for him, where he's on a rise towards that, oh, I just changed one of my answers. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Okay, I'm not going to actually change my prediction for an upcoming match, but let's say Cody wins the title. Let's say. That's a good feud for Sean Spears, coming off of beating Dustin, oh. going after that TNT title. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing, too, is that like, they started Sean Spears in AEW having a lot of animosity towards Cody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm giving it to Sean Spears just because I think he needs this more than anyone else. Um, that's my prediction. All right. That's what I'm going to go with. Sean Spears. Uh, up next, we got Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander. Maybe, maybe not. She looked pretty injured. Um, yeah, she she got some bad to that knee. So reminds me of when we went to fight for the fallen. Right. Yeah. yeah actually, she she took a pre. But honestly, I feel like specifically Daly's place is not a good been. venue for her. She's had she's had some rough times there. Yeah. Um. Assuming it goes on, if she's injured enough that she can wrestle, but probably shouldn't be going too strenuous i'm giving it to statlander okay uh it's one of those where it could go either way it really can because i don't think they'll have the match first of all i think they'll uh put somebody else in her place if they replace the match at all right i don't think it's a safe thing for baker to fight right now yeah depending on how bad that injury was this this is subject to change and this this is from uh this is a card from yesterday so that might have changed already i have not heard Mm -hmm. but i'm saying if this match does happen i'm giving it to statlander as well i just think that she is she's a really good competitor and they definitely set her up as one of the big three going for the title like hikaru shida Big Swole and Statlander are clearly all vying for the title. 
We'll get into how we feel about that since Hikaru is going for the title in this next match. So let's let's well, yeah. Let's. Do, I think the two are too intricately linked, so we should because it is to determine a women's title challenger. The mm-hmm. Baker. So let's do the Nyla Rose sheet of one first, yeah, and then circle back. Okay, so Who this uh, this will be a soft stat lander from both of us, and then we can. Discuss we'll, we'll... after we discuss the women's yeah. title. So let's. Because I I think that will impact our decisions. Okay, so yeah, so we got next up is Nyla Rose versus Hikaru Shida for the AEW Women's Championship. Which I'm staring this one out. I'm gonna say it's tough because like. Mm-hmm. Ooh, they've definitely, like, been building this one up the last couple weeks. And Hikaru, like, is clearly, like, the biggest contender. She's at the top of those top fives, like, every week. She's Mm -hmm. super popular, super over, definitely a great contender. But I don't know if Nyla's going to give it up without, like, a major fight. Like, she desperately wants to hang on to that title, Mm -hmm. and I don't blame her. I... This is it's going to be really close. I'm th- I feel like this is match it's going to go right to the wire. My, mm. Like close to time limit possibly even. But I think I'm going to say Nyla because I feel like they're setting it up that Hikaru, Statlander and Swole are all going to fight Nyla before one of them actually takes it. So I'm saying Nyla is going to retain. I agree uh for different reasons. Um Okay. It's too early to take an offer. She just won it at the last pay per view. That too, yeah. It's still it's still a pretty fresh title. That's a great way to cheapen a title is to WCW hot hand it, you know. Yeah, exactly. And they already like um uh Riho did not hang on to it for really long. that long. And with the with the tag team, they also didn't let SCU hang on to it for a ton of time. So like right now, I feel like they're they're focusing on strengthening the titles a little bit more. They're not super weak yet, but this is they're in a dangerous spot. Um, I agree. Which take going back to break Baker versus Statlander, heel versus heel match, fucking much harder to book than a uh, heel versus face. Yeah. So Statlander. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think Nyla I think Nyla will retain. I think Statlander will beat Baker just because you know, it's not really safe for her to be the number one contender right now if she's injured. It's not really being that it's for a title contention, um I think Baker will be replaced. And unless it's another face, we haven't seen Riho since she lost the title. Yeah. Well, although the, so, th- that was pretty soon after was when, you know, yeah, shit went down. So, but, In fact, so, we hadn't seen Nyla for quite a bit of that, too. She only just got back. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and But she was very, you know, deep on YouTube and then the backstage stuff by doing work from home videos. Right. So, I think Nyla's going to retain. Uh, it's a bad idea to take it off her right now. Conversely, I could see them putting it on Sheeta because Sheeta's there and has been there every week. Right. Uh, it is easier it's... to book. But I don't think they are concerned about that as much because, you know, none of their champions are really able to be there fully. So, I That's think... That's true. Yeah. I think they're taking into consideration a little absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's a great way to artificially maybe uh, to extend title reigns. Uh, converse to what WWE is doing. Where anyway, uh, MJF <laughs> versus Jungle Boy. Who you got? MJF versus Jungle Boy. Well, this one I feel like this is going to be a moment of levity after. Uh, after the the championship, which is going to be real rough, so this is gonna this is definitely going to be a fun match, for sure. Mm-hmm. Especially because this is the first one. I mean, MJF fought Marco Stunt this last week, or rather, 
just yesterday, but uh, that was kind of, you know, not not the the most high impact match. But I feel like MJF is definitely already over in what he's doing, whereas Jungle Boy, while he's over, I don't feel like he's really had a a moment in the ring. He's definitely had moments where it's like, yeah, he's he's really good, but he hasn't had a moment where it's like, aside from say, um, when he fought he Jericho and he went the yep. full ten minutes, that was impressive. But I feel like yeah. he needs another big moment like that, and I feel like taking down MJF, who's just been talking crap as he does, but like even more than usual, and just took down like his tag team partner. Like, I feel like Jungle Boy is going to win this. Like he's really going to knock knock MJF down and show him it's like you're not undefeated. Like this will be a definitive you are not the best for MJF. Mm, I'm going with MJF. They they're clearly he's coming hot off his match with Cody. He's you know, got he's super healed after all of his injuries recently. Like, he overhealed, you know? Right. I think Jungle Boy has been at home, hasn't been able to do the backstage bits as much. Mm, true, um, true. He grew that shitty beard, and ooh. Yeah. I think MJF has this for now. I don't think it'll be a clean finish. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to see Jungle Boy walk out with a win here. I think they're setting up Jurassic Express for a redemption thing. Okay. Because they've not had any major wins ever. That's true. They're kind of like Brandon Cutler and Peter Avalon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've had wins, but it's all been like fairly middling. Like They're impressive, but they have not impressed in any one specific moment. It's just a general, people like him. Yeah, yeah. And I think AEW is banking on their likability right now to let them lose a couple. I think they're going to do that here. Mm -hmm. And I think after this, going into All Out, they need to start dominating. And I think this is a great time for that to start. I'm going to say... I'm not changing my answer, but I'm making an addendum. This is going to be my shenanigans. I'm saying, I'm still going to say Jungle Boy wins, but I'm going to say there's going to be some Wardlow shenanigans. Well, of course. like. So it's it's an obvious one, but that can at least give me that half point. So, you know, that that's my safety net. <laughs> All right. So we've got the Casino Ladder match. Darby right. Allen, Colt Cabana, Orange Cassidy, Ray Phoenix, Scorpio Sky, Kip Sabian, Frankie Kazarian, Luchasaurus, and a mystery competitor. Which, as I did this, I accidentally capitalized mystery competitor. That'd be kind of an interesting gimmick. I feel like it'd be a little dumb, but like someone who's specifically always coming in as a mystery person, you never get to know who they are. Full, like a full morph suit, just like mm-hmm. you literally don't know anything about them except their silhouette. <laughs> Just a solid, like, black suit. Exactly. Or do it like the WWE video games. Uh, Just write vacant across their chest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Multi-time WWE champion vacant. <laughs> nice. Uh, Who do you got? Who do you got? Well. All right, first of all, first of all, who's the mystery competitor? That's that's the question here. That I will say that's another half point as well if we can guess the right mystery competitor. I have a handful of answers. I have one like I'm I think you're giving as my answer. You're more likely some... to get this one, but mm-hmm. mm. you know my answer, but I'm Yeah. I, you know what? I'll let you have my answer if you want it, and I'll take my uh comedic answers. I'm going to have to look at what your answer was again. <laughs> Hold on. Uh uh where were the messages? Uh, da, 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 da. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, damn it, all you Batman jokes. <laughs> Take up <laughs> <them> space. <laughs> they were more recent. They were like right before I sent the last Batman video. Hey, yeah, hold on. I'm just seeing. Uh, press 10, Vance. Uh, oh, uh, way, is that it? Way more no. recent. Way more recent. Way more recent. Way more recent. 
Yeah. That's the card. It was, it was like midnight last night. Since while we wait for Iggy, I'm going to say it's going to be Danhausen. And if it's not, <laughs> no, my actual answer is Pack. Pack. That's that's my thing. Is it's either going to be so, as someone new, or yeah. more likely someone who has not been around for but a has minute to be a credible person for it. If it's not Pack, if it's a WWE release, I don't know that any of them. Because of the 90-day non-compete clauses, I don't know if any of them are available yet. I keep hearing a lot of people say, oh, we'll see the Revival or the Revolt as they are. No, they're now that they're simply FTR because they got sued for using the name The Revolt. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think we'll see FTR show up. I think they're still under non-compete. Yeah, it's a, it's a little soon. I don't think any of the NXT talent that only had a 30 day non-compete and are now available are like names. Anybody would really recognize. So it's not like, you know, AEW fans are going to go, Oh, it's so, it's so. the only name that's free right now. There, actually, there's three names that are free right now, not signed to AEW or WWE or any of the other major promotions and are immediately available because contracts ran out or they just didn't have one. Right. Sting, uh-huh. which is, a, there's a lot of smoke there. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. Drew Gulak, which a handful of people seem convinced it is, but his manager is still, like, trying to get him back in with WWE right now. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, the third one doesn't really. It's not going to be CM Punk. No, it's not. It's not Punk. And so it's if it's a WWE debut or a former WWE debut, it's Sting or Drew Gulak. I, I'm feeling confident I, on Pack. I know we both want it to yeah. be Danhausen, but it's just, it's 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 such a low chance. It'll be amazing. But if he's it is. very nice and very evil. Oh, so nice, so evil, and. Like, think about this. Imagine he gets to go in on the TNT title instead of the AEW title. Oh. And and he can fight Lance Archer. Lance has so many teeth. Right. Here's the thing. I'd be most excited to see JR completely baffled by Dan (laughs) Houston. I want to hear him pronounce it as two names. Dan (laughs) Housen. And Excalibur's over there, like, no, no, it's 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 just it's one. It's Danhausen, yes. Yeah, you know, it, like he does his uh, Pee Wee Herman dance on yeah. the apron, and Jr's just like, what is he, what is he doing? What what is he going pulls on? out the jar of teeth? I yeah, that would be amazing. I'm gonna say, Pack Pack is a good answer, but I'm gonna say Sting for that ninth. All right, how about this? If it's a surprise debut, it's probably Sting. Yeah. If it's not a surprise debut, it's Pac. It has to be Pac. All the other names that are likely to fit that slot are already on the card somewhere. And they already, Pac already is like, he, he did a promo recently, so I feel like that was just a little bit of foreshadowing to be like, he's coming back. Yeah. Um... Because it's not likely to be Ray Phoenix or uh, Pentagon. No. Phoenix is already in there. Not that Sky and Kazarian are in there. Christopher Daniels I, isn't in there, but I don't think... I, I, uh, I feel like he's not... Not that he's bad, but I don't think he's a big enough draw for them to want to keep mysterious. Yeah. Um, I don't see a name on there. Like, in the list of potential names that... It's it's probably Pack or Sting. Okay, I so if, Sting. if so, you're gonna go with Pack, effectively. Yeah, and if it is Pack, he's my pick to win. Okay. If it's, if it's not Pack, it's Darby Allen. Like, okay. there's not even a fucking question. Yeah, I'm I'm also saying Darby because they've been it's... they've been building Darby hard. 
He's the only one that got a fucking promo. He's had multiple promos. The whole thing with no, Taz. No, I mean going into this match. That too, yeah. Like, uh, Kazarian and uh, Sky have been doing tweets, but so is everyone else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't see if it doesn't see you just yet. If it doesn't happen on TNT, it's n- not as of much importance. Like, I don't see Colt Cabana. No, I love Colt, but it. he's definitely he and he seems comfortable where he's at right now. I mean, damn sure ain't gonna be Kip Sabian. No, like, Kip Sabian is going no. Uh, something I've we realized is that like the reason Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford are so like underwhelming is because they feel like they were yanked right out of WWE. Yeah, like every their but, gimmick and everything about how they're being built, it just, it feels like just some weak, weak sauce WWE stuff. Yeah, like the <laughs> WWE stuff where they have the talent to do better, and Vince is ignoring them. Exactly, that's what it feels. Yeah. So if it's Pack, he's my pick to win. If it's not Pack, it's Darby Allen because I don't see Sting being able to carry a title. Okay. And. While the poker chip may not be a title, it's a, a contract for one, so I don't see that happening. I think it's Darby or Pac. Okay. So, yeah, if you will say, if Pac does pop in, you will you will get the half point for that, and then the full point if he wins. Um, whereas... If he doesn't pop in, my choice since he, my choice to win if he pops is not in, in the match if he pops in and darby wins uh doesn't count doesn't count yeah we'll say that's still get the half point only get the only half get... on that okay fair enough and then i'm gonna say sting it's a long shot but you know it, I mean, it, it's not be, impossible he'd be a draw he would get fans talking but i don't think he's the draw uh today that he was in 97 true but because as, as you nobody out, fucking watched tna when he was on it that's and he true. was on it for a long ass time well as you said with like jericho it's like it's a name that people who haven't been into wrestling in a while will recognize so maybe this it would get some people and it's not i'm not i don't and, definitely don't think he'll win i'm still then, saying darby to win but yeah I, I feel like he's enough that, like, they'd sign him. And I do think it's a different story with AEW. I don't mm-hmm. think comparing AEW bringing in Sting to TNA bringing in Sting is the same thing. Because if that were the case, AEW has already failed. Because TNA was floundering when they brought in Sting. Yeah. AEW wants to bring in Sting because Cody very desperately wants to be Dusty. Oh, certainly. <laughs> and he's recreating his dad's best WCW stuff. Not that that's a problem. I'm just saying it's the good parts of WCW that Cody is bringing back. Exactly. And Sting is that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, all right, so moving on, Matt Hardy and the Elite versus the Inner Circle in the Stadium Stampede, which is going to be it's a it's I'm glad that they did something big because since mm-hmm. Blood and Guts has been postponed more or less indefinitely for the foreseeable future, this is a good mm-hmm. compromise because this is going to be a really unique match and mm-hmm. um I'm glad because it's like something that really you could only do with Tony Khan is the head, like someone who has both access to a football field and access to a wrestling promotion to be like, let's just combine them and do something nobody's seen. So, well, I mean, empty arena matches have happened. I mean, yeah, empty but, arena, but th- not an arena not with, like this, not, and not this many people. Yeah, uh, The Rock and Mankind famously had an empty arena match for a Super Bowl halftime show. Oh yeah, uh, it's really good. No, it's not. Listen, the listen. The last shot ruined it. The last shot ruined it. I, well, and Mick there. Foley's, Mick Foley agrees. He lamented that uh, shot in uh, his book. He thinks it was a terrible decision. I, 
I mean, f- fair, but it's still it's so iconic, and I I, I can go so back and watch it and still have a good time. Oh, it's not a bad time. It's just. <laughs> That was a, a bad choice of shot. Fair enough. Um, who do you I'm have gonna have to. This? I'm gonna have to rewatch it and pay attention to that, especially it's when this he's time. got the forklift and he's lowering it onto the rock, and the rock's like laid out like this, and then goes, "Huh!" He rolls out of the way, but like the camera shifts to a like camera angle that is impossible to pull off in a wrestling match. Mm. And yeah, man yeah, I'm actually, like, I'm remembering it now, and it yeah. It's not good. I yeah. that that moment is not good, but the the entire the rest of the match is it, amazing. That's the Nick, thing. It's like, does it bring it down enough? Uh, 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 I don't know. I I I would say it's worth watching at least once. If you have not seen it already, oh yeah. you should definitely give it a watch. Uh, maybe skip their I Quit match, despite it being a markedly better match. It's a match that took years off Mick's career. Uh, he it changed how Mick wrestled from there on. He he, so skip that I quit match. But who do you got in the Stadium Stampede? The Elite or the Inner Circle? Man, this is a good question. I mean, the Elite is already like, this is the first we're seeing of the Young Bucks in a while. So are they are they really in condition to be coming back? They're showing. Matt's injured. Yeah, Matt's injured. Page, I don't know is. page is still not on the same page with them, no pun intended. Um, and He's the inner been living circle... in the woods and drinking for a long time now. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I think things are gonna break down on the elite side, and I feel like the inner circle is gonna take it because, like, they they they've been coming strong, and like with like the bubbly bunch and stuff, like they've really been going over. Like they they're they're becoming a much bigger like part of it than I thought. When I first saw the inner circle, I was like, okay, it's cool that there's a stable. I I don't care about like half of these guys. I I hate Sammy. I don't care about Jake Hager. Santana Ortiz are cool. Jericho I don't like. But then like they've really grown on me. Like even Sammy, I kind of really like Sammy now. He he's, he's your he's favorite good. Twink. I mean honestly, the cam the camera shows. Uh, they 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 know the sh- they know the angle they're getting and they they we know they're liking it. We know when you turned on Sammy was when his ass cheeks started hanging out of his tights. He dropped a nut one time. You can find uh, it. He, th- that nut popped out. Uh, I'm gonna go. Man, I was gonna go with the elite to begin with, but see, here's the problem. You've got Matt Hardy in there now. Mm-hmm. And they murdered Vanguard One. That's true. He's real upset. I honestly, I teared up a little bit, man. That was that was tragic. The fucking photo shoot he did with the pieces. Yeah, it's like, oh come oh. on, why why you gotta do this to me? Oh my I heart. Think, I think this. You know what? I'm gonna play it safe and go with the inner circle as well. Yeah, just because I'm not sure, and I don't want to lose a point here. That's the thing is that like, uh, that's the thing it's is Matt Hardy, that well. Matt Hardy and the Elite like that. There's like Kenny's doing strong. Uh, Matt Hardy like he clearly has a lot riding here. Like he's out for revenge, but you know, being uh being injured like an injury and someone who's not a team player, the weak links I think are gonna like make things break apart too much to really guarantee them a win. Mm-hmm. It, it's they're. I feel like they are wanting to pad out just a little longer to blood and guts. Yeah. I don't know if that's, they want to do that in front of a crowd and I've heard, Oh yeah. You know, 2022 before live crowds can be not in Florida, of course, cause WWE and blah, blah. anyway. Yeah. I don't think Tony would be that dumb though. No, yeah, that's the thing is like he's he he'll recognize that it's like oh they've officially said the restrictions, but I recognize I, that that's because we want it's an economic reason, it's not an actual health reason, and we don't need to get into all that because there's a lot of factors going into everything. But it's really not going to be safe for quite a while to have crowds again. No, and so 
I'm going to go so far as to say that they're going to have to scrap blood and guts for now. Yeah, it's 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 not happening for at least a couple years, but it's still that idea is not going to go away forever. It's it's going to happen. It's just going to be a while. Or, hmm? or they do it cinematic. They've not done any cinematic matches. Oh yeah, the closest they've had is the uh, episode two hundred of being the elite, which I, I think I think they'll be... go cinematic. That would be I cool. I think they should. I think they should. Uh, it's a way to do it safely. It's a way to do it. And it's kind a way... of get that out of the way. It's a know? way to do it that also gives them the opportunity to go even further in ways that you can't when it's when it's live. Like, if you actually, like... There, there are things that you can do in the production that will be a lot more impressive, especially for a match of that type. Like, I, I think, honestly... The, uh, like, uh, Undertaker in WWE has not been having good matches the past two years. Yeah. He, he's getting a little too old for them. Yeah. That's fine. Like, he's pushing 60, man. Uh, apparently, the reason he's doing these matches is... Um, any problems unfortunately uh, so they did a cinematic with aj styles mm. and by all accounts it was amazing and they said this could add you know five six more years of good matches to his career if they did them all cinematic style that's true it's like he's not it's not that he's not necessarily in good form it's just he has to make concessions for age. He's got to be. He's he he's not able to nail things in a single shot. But like, if you gave him a couple takes and you got the best one, like you can make him look fantastic still. And I think for what this match is for blood and guts, if they ever if they decide to do it now, that's how it has to be done. Just straight up, it has to be cinematic. Um. Otherwise, I say put it in the rear view and forget it for now. Oh, yeah, definitely, but way back burner. It, I, I'd love to see it eventually, but uh, honestly, if it takes some time, like, what, they can think even harder on it and, like, improve the idea as they go on and, de- and just kind of develop it in the background. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. Cody versus Lance Archer. Yep. Ooh, this one's I think the hardest one for a handful of reasons. Yeah, uh, they've been building Lance, they've been pushing Lance, they've been since before the tournament, they've been pushing Lance to fight Cody. But let us hold on before we actually call this match. They've released a tournament bracket before any matches took place, and can I say who nailed their bracket? 100% to this point. I got to tell you though, I felt the same way. I saw like I could see the the trail of the river coming. Like yeah. it it it, well, it they I were mean, good I matches, keep... but like it it was a little obvious where how it was going to go. The Lance Archer and Dustin Rhodes side were. Oh, like, sure. It, that one was obvious. The fun. Darby Cody, that was that was a toss up to me. Cuz it could be Darby Cody or it could have been Darby Sammy. And both are legitimate matches. Yeah. But other than that, I fucking nailed that one. You got it. And now I'll say this. I listed Lance as winning the whole thing on my bracket. That said, they uh, announced that Mike Tyson is going to be awarding the title. That more than anything, in my opinion, throws a bit of a monkey wrench into predicting who's going to win. Here's why. What's what's a better image for that pay-per-view? The triumphant babyface being awarded a title by one of the top celebrity names in combat sports in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that moment of Oh, you know, that catharsis right. of Cody 
holding up that, you know, TNT title and, you know, hand raised by Mike Tyson or Lance Archer snatching it from Mike Tyson's hands and the two of them going, you know, eye to eye, nose to nose. And yeah. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, we have seen because of movies like The Hangover, knows when to make himself not a badass. And apparently he was raised by, uh, or he was taught a bunch of toxic shit by a former manager mm -hmm. and is now working to get over that. Right. And I can see him putting aside ego long enough to take a bump from Lance Archer to make Lance look nice and threatening going forward. It's a good, yeah. That, but both angles of that, it's it's hard to say what's more appealing. And who needs this more? Because has Cody yeah. won at pay per view since beating uh, Dustin? No. Drew. He drew with Darby. Mm -hmm. He lost to Jericho. Yep. He lost to MJF. Unfortunately. He, uh, lost at Fighter for, or Fight for the Fallen. Oh, we did. Uh, yeah. He's not won on a pay-per-view that I can remember. I can't remember if he had a match at All Out. No, it was against Jericho, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a Jericho match. No, I... That was full gear, that was full gear in which he lost. So who did he fight at uh... All Out? Uh... I, I need to look that up. I don't you, think... I'll look that up while you muse. Well, my thing here is... The thing that really is telling here is the deal he made, the promise he made that he would not go for the heavyweight champion, the world champion, after that. He so said this he would is his challenge. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is this is his loophole to still be a champ without going back on that promise, which we did predict that he would do something in the upcoming time to kind of work around that. Now if he becomes if he becomes TNT champion, mm -hmm. that puts him on a high enough level that he could get challenged by whoever is the world champion, so he would still not be going. So that would be the loophole that I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And it uh, it and, would be it would be good to see to have that moment of catharsis. Uh first of all, Cody did win at all out against Sean Spears, so Oh, Sean, Sean, yep. Yeah, not that. That's a throwaway match. Not. It's how the story was booked, Sean. I think you're great, but they they didn't book you very strong going in. I'm sorry. Yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure Sean's like, yeah, no, that's. But it wasn't like yeah, they had a great story going in, but it did not have like a lot of fire behind it. Sean was not a dominant, you know, heel going in, like Lance Archer. I, up until Mike Tyson was announced, was convinced that Lance Archer was going to win. A lot of people were saying that it was Arn Anderson's promo last night that changed their mind that Cody could win. Yeah. So I, didn't, I didn't get that from Arn Anderson, because they said the same thing. In his match against MJF, Cody doesn't want to win. Cody has to win. You said that last time and he lost. You well, said that when he faced Jericho and he lost. You with the Jericho, he... sure. With the MJF, with how that fight matter. ended. Uh... Jericho didn't end very cleanly. Like That's true. So they keep saying, Cody has to win. Cody has to win. Well, and that's the thing is that every time he has lost... It has been because, or rather, every time he's lost when it's been a big match like that, it's not been something within his control. It's been MJF screwing him over. It's been, uh, it's been MJF getting lucky, because in reality that should have gone to a DQ because they were both out, but it didn't. So, in each case, Cody at the very least should not have lost those matches and because of that i feel like this is the first match where it's going clean enough that this is the one where he will actually accomplish it 
So you think Cody's going to win? I'm saying Cody. I'm de- I'm I am locked in for Cody. I'm thinking back to All In. Mhm. When he beat uh Nick Aldis for the NWA title. Mm. And the moment they had there and thinking what if that had been Tyson handing him the belt? I'm not going with Cody because of Arn's predict or promo last night because you know to me it's at this point it's a Bray Wyatt kind of thing. You got these great promos, but you never fucking deliver. Exactly. And Cody delivered the best promo I've seen in a decade or more against Jericho when he said, "You need this generation a hell of a lot more than it needs you." Ooh. And he still went on to lose that next. Saturday. Right. So for me, I think Cody needs to win, not in the, oh, I have to win. Like, I don't think he has, I think he needs it for, otherwise he's just lost it. His pay-per-view record sucks otherwise. Mm -hmm. Lance Archer doesn't need it. He's shown that he is cruel and dominant and can crush anybody. Yeah, he's he is by and far like he there's nothing stopping him right now. So more than anything, it needs to be something to show that he could be taken down at the highest level, but he's still just below that going to be taking everybody down until he gets another chance. He's going to be broiling on it for just months until he gets another chance. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't see it, you know. Well, let me do something real quick. Yeah. I haven't even been checking to see if there's a... Oh, come on. Uh, I was trying to fucking... Fuck it. Fuck it. I was trying to see if... Sorry. Uh, I was trying to watch the stream and see if people were chatting. But oh, I yeah. I have let... the chat up here, so... Nope. It wouldn't let me mute. So I kept hearing myself, and I was doing that feedback bullshit. Yeah, that'll that'll that's um, a, as a lot of audio engineers will say. Uh, if you want to drive someone insane, just play their voice back to them a half second later. Oh yeah, there's apps entirely called speech jammers that are mm-hmm. designed to do exactly that. Uh, so look up a speech jammer, folks, and that's what I just did to myself. Look up um, a speech jammer, and then record yourself trying to read anything, or yeah. like s- sing a song, anything. <sighs> Find out just how much your brain just melts down immediately when you're yeah. when you're not able to hear instant feedback. So, um, I don't think yeah, it's kind of like my thoughts on the Fiend in WWE winning the world title. He doesn't need it. Lance Archer doesn't need a belt to be Lance Archer. Cody needs a belt. Mm-hmm. Cody is gold. Cody is gold and without the actual physical gold there in his hand like and he i see this as exactly a cody belt not that he's not main event level great but he in wwe gave prestige to a title that was their mid card the intercontinental title that hadn't been there for a long time and I think this is, you know, obviously their mid card title, and mm-hmm. he can bring prestige to a belt just by holding it. And more than anything, if Lance loses here, he's already so angry, and a loss like this is just going to amp that up so much more and make him even more formidable against anybody mm-hmm. he's against. So whoever he fights after losing this is going to be torn to shreds. Imagine Jimmy Havoc versus uh, a pissed off Lance Archer. Oh, that or would be oh, beautiful. John Moxley versus Mox. a pissed off. Not for a title necessarily, just just the fight. Just one on one, just it's, it's, it's smacking smacking beef. Beef slapper. Yep. Yeah. All right. And that brings us Main King event. Of segues to the main event. <laughs> Mr. Brody Lee challenging the AEW champion, John. Or no, I'm sorry, John Moxley. 
that's the main thing uh, with all of what's happening. I miss Justin Roberts so much. Have you seen his hair? <laughs> oh no. Have you seen his quarantine hair? Oh no. <laughs> he ain't the dapper yapper no more. Oh no no no. He's got the sides, you know, mostly still short. But the top is just growing more and more, so he's got a top knot. He's got like the full Skrillex going. It, it's bad. It's bad. Listen, it's it's bad for a lot of folks. See, yeah, you and me and are not are like two of the only people not affected by that, because like your head is I'm shaved. Bald. I don't get haircuts, so we're yeah. we're we're on the opposite extremes of don't care about haircut. Yeah, and when I had hair. I was like you. I just let it grow. Huh. I didn't. It's easier. I didn't cut it. I didn't trim it. I just let it go. I'll say it's a pain in the ass to detangle every day, but once you get into the habit of that, and eh, it's not that bad. Mine never did that that much. Oh, mine's like crazy thick and curly, so it tangles like mad. No, I I had some pretty sweet hair, but uh, I got a bout of Bell's palsy, hmm. and maintaining shaving was a pain in the ass and so i just let my facial hair grow for the first time uh because i have very white trash hair like you can see here this shit doesn't grow yeah i can't i can't i can grow a sideburn and i can grow a mustache but this doesn't connect and this same thing i did i did no shave november this last year and like mm -hmm. i grew out a pretty nice mustache i had the whole handlebar going on but like yeah it doesn't connect so i couldn't get a goatee and i had to like i just had the scraggly bits that I eventually just like trimmed up for a little bit uh, around like the end of january i was just like i have to yeah. get rid of it i saved but... i saved the mustache so that when i reviewed sonic the hedgehog i could have a i could have a robotnik style mustache but then I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm done. I can't eat ramen or, like, anything without getting all up in there. You know what the weirdest part of shaving your head is? Hmm. The, the very first time you walk out in the rain? Yeah. I have – I've, I've shaved my head in the past when I used to bicycle a lot because, like, the helmet sucks with hair. So I just, mm -hmm. like – I was like, I'm just going to shave it. And it's – yeah, it's so, like, refreshing to, like, just feel everything through your scalp. Yeah, but the first time you feel it, you're like, what the fuck is that? Did a it's bird weird. just shit on my head? And you're like, oh, it's the tiniest of raindrops. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, I don't feel the rain at all. My hair's thick enough, so yeah, no. the few times I felt that, I was like, this is... Uh, I I'm have, not I used it. to look good. I miss hair. <sighs> I can concur. I've seen pictures. Uh, so who you got? Moxley versus Mr. Brody Lee. <sighs> now this is... This is the big one. This is especially, like, this is the first chance. Brody's had some matches, but, like, this is the chance where he gets to really prove why he's the exalted one. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Here's the thing. I already used my shenanigans, but I'm, like, positive there's going to be some Dark Order shenanigans on this one. Mm -hmm. For certain. But... I'm gonna say that Mox retains. Like this is like what, like his second, third, like title match since he's won second. the title. Second, yeah. He defended against Jake Hager on Dynamite. That's right. Um, yeah, he's hanging on to it. right. That was the that was the uh empty stadium match, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I yeah, he's gonna retain for the same reasons we said before. It's like it. This is this is really important, and we were honestly shocked that Jericho lost it when he did. Even after having it for so long, it's like Mox yeah. is gonna keep this. He's gonna I hang think, on to it. I think Mox needs to carry it at least until full gear. Oh yeah, give it a full fucking year. You know. Or no, he won it at uh, Revolution, didn't he? Yes, it was Revolution. At the very least, full gear. He needs to carry it for the majority of the year. Oh yeah. I would, I would say a full year. And would... more than anything, like that's gonna bring some interesting stuff into what's going on with Dark Order. It's like if Dark Order, if their Exalted One loses, what does that mm -hmm. say about the whole stable? Like, what's what's happening with that? 
what what's how are they going to retaliate what's going to happen like it's so much more interesting as a story if Brody loses for it's m- more boring for them it strengthens the championship for Mox like it's just it, it, it it's just so much more potent there's so much more potential going on with a Mox victory I feel like Brody doesn't need the gold Mm. I also think he's going to lose because the Dark Order's not over. Oh, they're, they're yeah. Unfortunately, they they started they started getting kind of over right before the Exalted One was announced and then they shifted things and I think that set them back. Well, what fucked them up was that end of the year New Year's Eve episode. Mm. That was yeah. where it went bad. Um <laughs> Like that end of the episode where they came out for the beat down and and then changing <laughs> it from the cult group to the mafia style group. Uh, I I do think, and I don't I haven't seen anybody reference this, so I'm going to be the first to make this comparison. I think having Brody Lee as a Vince McMahon parody. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not. Uh, he's just a mafia boss. A legally um, distinct Vince McMahon parody. Yeah, I think that's actually a brilliant, brilliant move that uh, nobody's calling attention to. Yeah. Because this is, uh, I, the reason they teased Christopher Daniels as the leader of the Dark Order, was as a wink and nod to uh, the Ministry of Darkness. Right. Back in the late 90s. And he was going to be the higher power originally. But Vince McMahon didn't believe that a man that small could command the Undertaker. Despite the fact Paul Bearer did with the urn. But whatever. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So who was the leader of the Ministry of Darkness? Vince McMahon. So who's the leader of the Dark Order instead of Christopher Daniels? Not Vince McMahon. Yeah, which is, I, it might be cognitive bias, but it seems so obvious. And yeah, I'm shocked that I'm only really hearing about it from you. Like No one else has made this connection. No one has and made the connection. Think... It's so obvious, especially with those promos where they're eating dinner. Like, it's so obviously McMahon. When the guy sneezes and he sends him out of the room. and Yeah. The way you dress uh, promo he did where he tore down the Dark Order for wearing the clothes that they'd been wearing instead of a suit. Yeah. Uh, because that is a thing that... Uh, though... Oh, to circle back to the ladder match real quick. Imagine it is CM Punk, though. Mm. And you've got Colt Cabana in the ring. Oh. Mm, I don't think it will be, though. Because I just don't see Punk wanting to wrestle anymore i think he's done yeah so, i feel like he's 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 had all he needed it would be interesting but i don't i don't, I don't think, think his heart's in it no he he had the, the business killed in him but i think moxley's going to retain i think every title that's on the line is going to be retained i think uh you know it makes more sense for moxley to hold on to it mm-hmm. um so, but, oh. and plus, think about that match. If I'm right, Moxley versus Pat, mm. or Moxley versus Allen. Mm. Those are far more interesting options than Mr. Brody Lee versus Darby Allen. Yeah, or Mr. Brody Lee versus Pat. Though, now that I've said that. I actually don't want it to be Pac that wins. Okay. Because every, with the exception of Kenny Omega, challenging Jericho for the first title, every title match since that one for the AEW title has been former WWE guys. Mm. Cody, John, yeah. Brody Lee. Yeah. And if you give it to Pac, that's another one. Darby would be the first since Kenny to challenge for it that wasn't a WWE guy. Right. Well, no, Hangman Page. Hangman Page. 
uh, it was not Kenny, it was Hangman Page that did not win it. Kenny lost his right to challenge for the title. That's right. But still, right. it's still, it's been ever since Jericho won WWE guys going forward. And you could argue, well, yeah, they're the most famous and most over biggest draws. And that's entirely fair. But I want to see some of this talent they've been building. And right. I think Darby fits that bill. Oh, absolutely. And they've been building him up with these promos of late, for sure. So, um... so before we finish off with these predictions, uh, you still have a shenanigans available. So where, yeah, I do. Where do you think you're going to put that? Main event, obviously. Dark okay. Order. Yeah, like, I Dark don't think Order. that's even a question. Um, yeah, we're both going with real shape, safe shenanigans. Yeah, this time around. there's no other match on the card aside from Wardlow getting involved that really calls for shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tully Blanchard's not been around. It's not safe for him to be there. Private Party and Best Friends aren't going to be doing anything because Orange Cassidy's in the ladder match. Uh, and Private Party doesn't do sh- And neither of them are shenanigans guys unless they're fighting heels. I would say, so, I would say Jake the Snake maybe in the Cody versus Lance. Um, maybe he did. I mean, he did the stuff with Brandy, so uh. yeah. But Cody matches always. It's the same as calling shenanigans on a, a MJF match with Wardlow, or me calling it on Brody Lee. It's just a given that you know Brandy is going to come out probably Dustin unless he's just destroyed by Sean Spears probably QT Marshall yeah probably you know the Nightmare Family probably Diamond Dallas Page but like they it's just how those go and I could easily see Arn Anderson coming out and giving you know that's who it's going to be it's going to be Arn Anderson coming out and giving Jake the Snake a spine buster and that's going to be it Mm -hmm. if Jake can take the bump um. So, calling it up there, like, and they've pretty much like telegraphed that, like they guaranteed that. So, it's not much of a. So I'm going to go with Brody Lee calls out the creepy perverts and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so those are our double or nothing 2020 predictions. You can see them all okay. on screen right now, and. To remind you of how our scoring system works, if you get it, if you get it correct, one point. If you, if it's a question of who might do the thing, if you at least get this person involved, that's another half point. Uh, you get a half. So, point. for instance, the biggest thing here would be the stadium stampede. Yep. We didn't predict who would pin who. Oh, that's true. Okay. We just predicted that the inner circle would win. Yeah, let's uh, let's say that, and it's it is a falls count anywhere, so. I think Paige is going to cost, and Matt is going to get pinned by Co- or Jericho if Matt's in the match. That's okay. the big thing. That's the big thing. Matt pinned um, by Jericho. Matt Hardy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not, not Matt. No, 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 no. Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson, okay. Yeah, right, think... with the injury, gotcha. Okay, and I'm going to say... So if I get that right, viewers, while Iggy decides, I will get an extra half point. Right, and I'm going to say... If Jericho and Matt Jackson are involved in the finish. If Jericho definitely pins Matt, then I get a full point. If Matt pins Jericho, however, I only get a half. Right, yeah. If, If you get it fully correct, you get another point. If you at least predict who's involved, you get a half point. I'm going to say... Jericho's pinning, but he's going to pin Hardy. Because I feel that there's a bit more being said there. I don't see Matt taking a pin anytime soon. They want him to come in nice and strong. Okay. And um, then... In the latter match, yeah, there's not really anybody getting pinned. But I'll get a half point if it's Pac. Yeah. As the mystery man. And I'll get a one and a half points if he also wins. Yep. But I'll if only he's... get one point if he's not there and Darby wins. 
Right. Okay, so we got all of that settled. So yes, you can see all of that there. Whoever gets less is going to do a punishment before the next pay-per-view. And um, speaking of which, we haven't uh, actually done the punishment from last time, which, as it was Revolution, we decided that the loser, which in this case was me, would have to sing uh, something Revolution-related, which in my case is Les Mis. And I plan to do it a little bit bigger production, but since we're here... And since I only got two more days, I got the lyrics. Let's do this. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me, I'll just bring them over so that they can be read. Ooh, let's, let's hope I can remember uh, the melody to this whole thing. <clears throat> Get a little. <clears throat> a little throat spray. All right. Let me think, how does this song go? Okay, I'm using the lyrics, but I don't remember the melody, and I don't have a backing track, so the rhythm might be off on here. <clears throat> Do you hear the people sing, singing a song of angry men? It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums There is a life about to start when tomorrow comes Will you join in our crusade? Who will be strong and stand with me? Somewhere beyond the barricade Is there a world you long to see? <clears throat> Sorry, my breath control is not very good. Then, I don't remember how this part goes. I'm winging it. Then join in the fight. They'll give you the right to be free. Do you hear the people sing? Singing a song of angry men. It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. Will you give all you can give, so that our banner may advance? Some will fall and some will live. Will you stand up and take your chance? The, the blood of the martyrs will... I don't remember how these lines go. We'll water the meadows of France. Do you hear the people sing, singing a song of angry men? It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. This is the only lighter I have. <laughs> there we go. That's the it's end. My, uh, my electric lighter. I planned to do a full melody and stuff, but I, I, I slacked off, procrastinated, and ended up not doing it. I also clearly did not remember how to do the parts at the end of the verses. But... There we go. That was my punishment. That was very All embarrassing. Right. Very, <laughs> very well done. Thank you. Thank you. So, about. now for my little back to WWE rant. Yes, we can talk for about that. For those of you who don't know, because you don't follow, mm -hmm. about a month ago, WWE fired over 30 of its talent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notable names. Rusev, uh, The Revival... Uh, mm -hmm. Drake Maverick. That's who I want to talk about first. They fired him after announcing that he would be in a cruiserweight tournament. So, they have a cruiserweight champion already. But because of shit going on, because of Steve Carino, he got suplexed. You know, he doesn't want to get suplexed, so he's staying home. And so they're holding a tournament for an interim cruiserweight champion. Other guy's still the champ, but they're going to have one for TV for now. They announced Drake Maverick was going to be in that show. Then they fired him. And he asked if he could still be in the tournament. Because he's still under 90-day non-compete, he can't go anywhere. And technically, he's still getting paid by them, so might as well use him. Yeah. They've used the fact he's fired as part of the storyline. Oh. Showing his emotional videos on Twitter and everything. Yeesh. During, 
And so some people were like, oh, well, it's clearly a work. He's not really fired if they're, you know, doing all this. If he is, that's pretty tasteless. Well, if he's not fired, that's a slap in the face to, like, all the talent that did get fired. That too, yeah, considering that they didn't get any kind of notice, of at least, like, no... Uh, not notoriety what's the what's the more positive one of that uh i don't know they had the notoriety but positive <laughs> yeah they didn't get the rub ah on yes the way out, like there we are and what makes it worse is for wrestling insider or one of the dirt sheets is saying no he's still fired they're still gonna let him go when this tournament's over he's not getting rehired Man, that's a fucking ru- awful thing to do. Yeah. Especially using him like that. Uh, and what they're actually doing to him to further the story. Then there's the fact that they told talent, oh, you don't have to come in. You don't have to come in. It's perfectly fine. You won't be punished. They didn't strip the title from the cruiserweight champion, but they did strip it from Sami Zayn who was the Intercontinental Champion. And they put it on someone else. They stripped it from him for not showing up. And I wonder I wonder why Sami Zayn would have had a different treatment. I, maybe it's because he's of uh, different descent than Saudi Arabia. He's of Syrian descent. Mm. And Saudi Arabia is, you know paying wwe shit tons of fucking money right now to come yeah. and put on shows in their country and sammy Zayn's and you know people were famously killed by saudi arabians and so sammy has a sammy for syria charity that whenever uh you know wwe does one of their shows getting that blood money because keep in mind this is the same people that murdered an american citizen and you know right before the show went on in Saudi Arabia uh, with Jamal Khashoggi and our president and WWE were like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. There's money involved. Uh, same country. So whenever one of these shows is done, uh, Sammy, you know, does a lot of promotion for his charity, Sammy for Syria. And a lot of channels like ours who actually make money doing this, which <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? Uh, they donate all the proceeds from those shows that they do reviewing uh, the Saudi Arabia Crown Jewel shows to Sammy for Syria. I'm, and I can't imagine that, you know, that doesn't play a fucking part. You know? Yeah, uh, that's that's something to keep in mind, especially with something, um, something like wrestling, which is that as uncomfortable as it can be pointing out that there are politics involved really any media including wrestling is political on some levels so they, they're making some statement like there's well, there's fuck. no way to divorce it from politics in some way and the especially is in the wwe hall of fame yeah and vince mcmahon's wife was on his fucking cabinet they even like trump even discussed like making mcmahon uh like head of the economy uh, like an economic economy yeah. yeah like this is th- th- this is not only like is it always in some way political i mean look you can look back at like hogan sergeant slaughter um uh uh, uh iron sheet it's like all of that like clearly was very politically motivated and like now it's like even more intrinsically tied because someone who was so involved with professional wrestling professional wrestling with the company that was at a peak is now like in the highest political office arguably in the world so and they're old friends and and the whole thing with uh not uh super a p a c t or super a c p i can't remember his new name a c h that's it hmm. super a c h when he was in w w e and they did that racist ass uh t shirt you know that was a year ago that was last year. That was not that long ago. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The 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 longer this stuff goes, the more ridiculous it feels because like you can make arguments it the when the farther back you go, you can make arguments for it being more of yeah, more of a a matter of ignorance, more of a matter of the times, but like 
it, well, the, the longer now it's like we're so, we are so aware of it it's being clearly stated by all of the people affected in a very visible platform on the internet and it's still being ignored and it, it just feels like so much more of a slap in the face because now it's clear they know like they are very much aware there's no way they couldn't be unless they are completely deaf to everything everybody's saying but like it, it's it's just really frustrating to see them like completely ignore that yeah and there's one last thing i want to discuss yeah well two uh we already touched on the fact they're not testing talent yeah which is uh, a political thing now too which is ridiculous so, yeah. um, another one of the big things was god damn it shut the fuck up the forecast tonight is 64 i don't give a shit about the forecast and tomorrow um, be you got it there'll be they, weather the whole reason they're even able to run shows right now is because Vince McMahon bribed Governor DeSantis. Oh, of course. Of course. Like, he straight up gave the state of Florida a shit ton of money. And then the next day, oh, by the way, uh, we have determined that wrestling is a uh, essential business. And the guy that they've been pushing for years, uh, Roman Reigns, just had twins, right, as all this shit started. He also just got over leukemia. And didn't want to fucking wrestle. Yeah. Which is his fucking right. So he didn't. Because he did not, they have now edited him out of WWE history. There was a match he had with Brock Lesnar at Mania in which Seth Rollins cashed in his, uh, their version of the casino chip that Darby Allen's going to be carrying out. Mm -hmm. uh, their version of that, the Money in the Bank contract. He won by, you know, interrupting a Roman Reigns versus Lesnar match. They cut out the part of that where Rollins comes in and then it cuts to him just holding the title up. They sh they, they didn't show Roman losing. That's... They've, they've edited him out of a bunch of shit. They're not allowed to mention him on commentary. <sighs> and you could argue, well, you know, that's because they don't want to... Uh, be bringing up somebody that's not going to be on the show no they do that shit all the time yeah they do that all the time it just i mean uh, you're talking you're doing wrestling you're going to talk about the the history of wrestling you're going to talk about pertinent facts whether whether that person is involved or not like it's it's just in the context of what's happening you can bring up other people and from what i understand they not only cut him or they stopped airing the smackdown opening like theme yeah because he's at the end of it and then the, when it came back, he was edited out. Ugh. So, fuck you, WWE. There's literally nothing. Sincerely, that, it's like it's been it's, Vince it's been a boring no it's part. been a boring company for quite a while, but now it's just truly a trash company. Well, it's it gets real worse. Awful. It gets a little bit worse because of the XFL bullshit. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Vince McMahon had his own football league that started this year. Yeah. Which was a recreation time. of the one from what, 2001? Uh, 2000, 2001, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe even earlier, because I feel like I was still watching wrestling when it came out. Um, it was something in the, yeah, around then. And it failed. And Very then hard. This one, and then this one came out, and it was doing okay. But it failed because of Steve Carino. They didn't want him, you know, breaking into the arena and attacking the football players. And so he just shut it all the fuck down on his own. Like I mean, shut it down. And there's a report that came out yesterday that he did all that to tank the price on it so that he could buy it back dirt cheap. Come on. Yeah. So. Fuck you, Vince McMahon. Sincerely, fuck. So goddamn hard. Fuck Vince McMahon. I hope and that all of the talents who, who work for WWE are able to get a better deal with a better promotion someday in the future. Go to Japan. Yeah, yeah go to Japan. Go to AEW. If you, if you can, yeah. Because uh, y'all deserve better than a company that doesn't give a shit about you like Sincerely. that. Sincerely. The Sincerely. only person in wrestling I would say is worse than Vince McMahon is goddamn Jim Cornette. But he doesn't have as much, much power, influence. really. No, but he is 
toxic as shit. Oh, certainly. And the fact he has fans is disgusting. Anybody who hears what he said about Becky Lynch or Dana Brooke in this past week and still tunes in because they love what he has to say, don't ever come near me. Oh, it's it's You're the, the kind same... of person that thinks Rorschach is the hero of Watchmen, and I don't need you in my life. It's the same awful crap of, like, um, in the voice acting community, Vic Mignonia, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah, it came out that he's ju- just been, like, harassing people for years, harassing women for years, sexual harassment nonsense, and it became a, an even bigger thing because the idiots who decided to defend him in, uh, defend him for his defamation suits that he was bringing up against a lot of people who are saying actual facts about him, like, they were not wrong, uh, it became a huge thing because they were incompetent morons the choice quote if you haven't heard it is one of the direct things they quoted a tweet where it was like uh vic is like they're like he did this what a complete piece of shit and their response was uh saying that he is a piece of shit implies that he is feces as he is not literally feces that. that is defamation such a complete misunderstanding of how defamation works it literally there are People on law Twitter, actual lawyers who are like, this line specifically is going to be studied in law classes for decades. You guys have changed the history of law in the worst way with your incompetence. You're so fucking dumb. Generations. Yeah, but the thing is, even with all of this, even with all the stuff that's come out that has shown that he clearly did this stuff, there was still an idiot on Reddit who was just like, if I wanted to hire Vic... How would I do that? And we're just like, I mean, you could talk to his, what do you mean? Like, wh- why wouldn't you be able to? Like, he's still a working actor. And they're like, well, I mean, like, he's, it, does he get, did he get blacklisted or whatever? Like, th- to be clear, you know I stand with Vic. Means, and it, like, he literally, without anyone's question, he was just like, I totally believe that he didn't do it. And it's like, nobody asked. And so my response was like, that's your fucking choice, you idiot. Uh, if you have the money... Approach his fucking agent, I guess. Like, it's going to be expensive. And yeah. you're a fucking asshole for, be- for, those... for outright ignoring multiple accounts of people being like, yeah, this guy did fucked up shit. And you're just like, mm, no, I just like him. I like the, the fucking shit he was in. It's like, it doesn't matter how good of a fucking actor you are. If you pull any shit like that, fuck your career. You don't deserve yeah. shit. Same and with Kevin Spacey. Same with Bill. Co- all these people. You do fucking any of that shit. I don't care. You are with all of the way more talented people out there who can't get work for shit, who are cool and don't do that. You don't deserve to be getting those roles. They should be getting those roles over you, a fucking monster. Yeah. Get out of my life. And for those who don't know about the Jim Cornette thing. He was the commentator for NWA Power on YouTube Mm -hmm. up until he made an extremely racist joke. And people, and what gets me about that, it was an obviously racist joke. The show was pre taped and it still made it to air. Yep, that made the edit. And you'd think, how could that possibly happen? Well, Billy Corgan's in charge of W, or fucking NWA. So. I'm not shocked. The motherfucker uh, has been on fucking Alex Jones and shit. I'm not shocked that... I I always think... Howard Stern... I know you're not a fan of Howard Stern, but they were talking on that show about um, when PewDiePie did this nonsense and dropped the N-bomb on a stream, and they, like, listened to the clip and everything, and they immediately were like... No, it's like time. yeah no it's like you don't deserve like Howard Stern was like you don't deserve any of this you're very lucky to be where you are and all you have to do is not say that word that's it and you f- fucked up you failed like Volkswagen that's the that's the up. it's so simple just be a cool fucking person look at Markiplier he's never had one fucking scandal and he's like he is like the second in line behind PewDiePie for yeah. people. He's got like 25 million subscribers and he's a super cool dude. He's chill. Yeah. He's never has a single problem. Is he was kind of corny, Grimps but fans. you know, you and I are game groups fans. They've done yeah. shit that I've been like, that was questionable, Aaron. And guess what? 
they worked to better themselves. They learned. They changed like themselves. They, they were like, you know, we're sorry. We absolutely screwed up here. And so they've gone out of their way to be better people. Oh, yeah. And I was just listening that's to... That's why I'm still their fan, because <laughs> they try. I actually <laughs> just... I, I've, I just watched Super Mario Maker 2 when they played that last year. And now I've been working through the first Super Mario Maker from like 2016, 2018. And there's just a market improvement even in that. Like they have a whole discussion that's like they're doing their best to not offend, but they're being pretty ignorant. And you can tell like at, they like got like comments and responses and figured out, oh, yeah, we're being stupid. We need to change yeah. ourselves. Whereas PewDiePie is like, it was just a joke. Like he's trying to make excuses, and, he and it's like hired people to hold a sign that said "kill Jews." I think that happened before the N word thing, matter, but it's just regardless. as bad, yeah. or even worse, honestly. And he's never like apologized. No, that's the simplest thing you because his his excuses. It was a joke, and it's like as always, a joke is set up punchline, or more importantly, context uh, subversion. So the context of a joke, which in this case, ironic racism is pretty tasteless in most cases, but the the context of that is always, I'm not racist. And so the subversion is, listen to me say an outlandish racist thing, knowing that which, I'm not, but that doesn't work when we don't know you personally. If we don't know, have the first part where we don't know that, if all most people see you as when you were a huge public figure who goes on like the news and is talked about on like Newsweek and shit and you do this stuff guess what all we see is you doing racist shit that's all we see so and the, where's the context there it's not if, a joke without it and if yeah and the problem with that argument is i'm not a murderer when i stab you it's just for lols yeah but you're still stabbing somebody. Exactly. No matter what, it's like, no matter why you're saying it, whether you mean it to be funny or not, you're still putting harm out into the world. You are still putting these ideas and messages into the world. And whether you believe them or not, you're hurting people. And probably some, some portion of the hundred million fucking people who subscribe to him probably agree with that unironically. And he's just bolstering them by being like, oh, this guy I like also thinks this nonsense exactly absurd so, absurd and so god it's it's so fucking irresponsible i hate him so much he's he has the biggest platform in human fucking history of the most impressionable young children ever mm -hmm. and he's s abusing it the only thing he has not done like the only way it could be worse is if he was like soliciting fans for underage sex he hasn't that we know yet but, like, that's not a good fucking benchmark to be that at least you're not a pedophile. No, that is not a benchmark you need. You want to be at. You want to be a lot better than that. Yeah. And uh, another thing Jim Cornette uh, this week did. Oh, no. This, yeah, this is about women this time. Great. So, um, he... Becky Lynch, who was the top woman in WWE, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, was the top name in WWE, if we're going to be fair. Oh, sure. For a good period of time. Absolutely, yeah. Is pregnant. She's pregnant with Seth Rollins' baby. They're engaged. They're about to be, I think they're married, but they haven't had a ceremony. Okay, I so just the... Don't quote me on that. The certificate but, signed, have not had the reception. Uh, Seth did refer to her as his wife, so... Okay. In his takedown of Cornette later, um, she's pregnant with his kid, so she had to abdicate the women's title and gave it to uh, the winner of the Women's Money in the Bank this year, Asuka. Jim Cornette said extremely disgusting things about her having a baby. I'm not going to repeat them. If you want to know what he said, you can look it up on WrestleTalk.com. They have a God, I really article about it. That's the thing um, is with a lot of stuff. It's like I'm glad that people are taking people down and showing that they're smarter than all this bullshit. But like, I my, emotionally, I can't. No matter how good the takedown is, like it's really messing with me to see all of the nasty ignorance from different people. Like some of my favorite YouTubers, it's like I can only watch them sometimes when I'm in a real good emotional place because I just can't handle locking, watching the people that they're taking down. 
It's it yeah. hurts me. Like it hurts Cody, me. Cody Johnston is hard to watch right now. Mm, yeah. Cody Johnston. Um, and it's so good. It, the content is so good, but it's just like I need some kind of positivity with that show. I know yeah. it's he does he does stuff from time to time, but man, it's so cynical. It's I listen to his podcast too that he and Katie Stoll do. It's I'm sure it's good. But it's I, yeah. It's a lot of that stuff. They even they have a secondary podcast with um, uh, it uh, him and Katie Stoll work on the on the actual YouTube show, and then they have the podcast, and sometimes they have guests, and then they have another podcast called The Worst Year Ever, which is specifically about the current election that we're leading up to with another cracked writer. He does Behind the Bastards. Uh, he does like legitimate journalism now too. Uh, crap. Uh, you'll know the name as soon as i say it because i recognize tom raymond or no tom raymond? uh it's hold michael on swaim? not michael uh, swaim i i'd like to see more of michael it's i miss him it's not soren he's on american dad not soren it's not daniel o'brien he's on the, the he's on last week tonight uh yeah he is there. yeah he got to actually be there when they accepted the emmy which was super cool to see see him there let's see mm. can i it's an iHeart Radio. Production. Is it the guy with the like blonde hair and the thin mustache who lived on a boat for a year? It's hard to say because it's it's. Or is it Adam Todd only. Brown? Not Adam is Todd Adam Brown. Todd I think Brown? it's another Adam. Oh, here we go. Robert Evans. Robert Evans. Oh yeah 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 yeah. No. I just I haven't listened to it in a while because it's depressing, but it is good. They've yeah, done they've hard. done profiles of every single candidate, which now I mean there's only two, so. But uh, they've also oh, done. God. Did you see who he's stuff. floating as his vice? I think I heard it once, and I was so disappointed. Uh, Klobuchar. Yeah, that was it. I. Uh... Joe, and come like, on, man! Just tr- you just try hear, your best. Uh, we have to. We have to vote for you at this point. You gotta like at least make. I gotta vote make... for a fucking rapist. Like, thank you for doing that to me, Democrat just like, fucking party. I just. Thank Joe, you for making me vote for a fucking rapist. Joe, Joe, just like, I'm already having to vote for you, but like, can you at least make me be a little less ashamed of that? Like, a little. Just a, make me feel like it's at all not just because the other guy is a million times worse. I would have voted for, like, I would have been excited for Yang. I would have been okay with Yang. Versus yeah. Joe, like, yeah. Obviously, Sanders. Uh, Warren would have been d- acceptable. I still wish the ticket was Warren Sanders. Or I Sanders think Warren. the the sad either, thing... Either one. The, the sad thing with Warren is once she turned on Bernie, it, like, that was the nail in her coffin. Like, she could have and maybe she st- st- stuck around, but, like, yeah, as soon as they did that, it's like, no. It, it's unfortunate, hun. And I know I why shouldn't say she that. Sorry, that's condescending. I should not say "hun" to her. I know she, why she, she is a very respectable she person. That vice president nod, but it. She was never going to get it. She wasn't. Unfortunately, she was too popular. People liked her, and not Joe. And he was never going to be second fiddle again after everybody loved Barack so much. Of course, he's going to go with somebody like a Klobuchar. It's I'm not sh- even. His politics aren't even what I'm worried about. It's just like. The man is just degrading mentally. He's just not, he's just not fit to lead anything. And it's just unfortunate because it, it makes he's such a Oh yeah, neither of them are, but the thing is when it comes down to it, it's like they're both just like have just as many problems with communicating, but Trump is able to fake it so that he at least seems like he's saying something that makes sense. Until today, did you see what the fuck he said today? Oh god, what? They asked him about per capita deaths and he says when you talk about per capita, there's a lot of different kinds of per capita. No, and it's... when you talk about per capita here versus per capita somewhere else, it's different. No, that's what per capita is. The it's a technical com- term that literally equalizes. It's not. I'm gonna different... say it's pretty obvious when he does that shit. It's because he recognizes that if he looks like he doesn't know something, people will jump on him. They're gonna jump on him regardless. But like. He's hoping you don't realize he does not know what that word means. He has no idea no, what you're talking care. about. And yeah, he doesn't yeah. care. But it's like, that's the thing is like, he wants to like, 
as he said, it's like I can play presidential, so it's like he's he's playing a part. He's trying doing everything he can to emulate the way presidents talk, but he sounds like a he sounds like a coke rattled idiot because he is. Yeah, and you know. I hope I hope now that he's he's dumb enough that he's taking hydroxychloroquine. I hope that that just t- puts his heart out. If if he is, he if he's not just being I don't like, think he's taking it. He's I don't think he is it. either. He's I've, lying. I feel like he's, he's lying. lying. I feel like he's lying he's to lying. do that. But that's the thing is like nobody bought into it. Even Fox News was immediately like, "Do not do it. It will kill you." Like he, they were even they were like, "No, do not listen this time. This will kill you. This is poison." Like, but he's still pushing it. He's still. It, it's absurd. Like. I, Wear a fucking mask, people. Please, please, God, let's not get into that again. But like, pe- immediately as soon as they started like lifting any restrictions, people already weren't doing anything, and now going to Walmart, it's like tomorrow. people people act like n- nothing's like it, it, we're back to normal. They act like nothing. Like just because they've said that you can do stuff means that you should have a brain, yeah. people. Do your own research, educate yourself, do the smart thing. Don't just do what is convenient. Honestly, for me, I'm at a point where, go ahead, go ahead. If you if you think it's a hoax or if you think it's not that big a deal, go ahead. We don't want you around. But that's the problem, fucking though. Fucking survival of the fittest. Find out what that really fucking means when you're dying. Uh, my problem is, though, that like with the masks... Especially, it's like, what they're doing is not going to harm them. It's going to harm everybody else. Like, if I'm wearing a mask, that's helping everybody else. But if they're not wearing masks, then I'm the one most at risk in that situation. And it's like, what can I do? It's not a personal liberty thing. You are actively endangering people by not doing it. The pandemic will end. Okay, that is a guarantee. It will end eventually. But the longer you ignore stuff, the longer you pretend it doesn't matter the longer it's going to last and the more people will die because of it. That is well, your active getting... decision. That is your active decision by not paying attention and not following the rules. Every and rule you're breaking is killing people. Stop it. And for all of you out there who are going to store saying, I can't wear a mask. I have a medical condition and HIPAA says I don't have to fucking tell you. No, it doesn't. It does not say that. Stop getting all of your information from memes on Facebook you're looking like an idiot. Show show me a doctor's note. Show me a doctor's note that states that you cannot wear a mask. And the thing is, if HIPAA did say <laughs> that, it also says that as long as a business provides you with a reasonable means of substituting the mask, i.e. personal shoppers or anything like that, then that's all they have to do. They don't have to let you into their fucking store without a mask if they don't want to, the un- if they're providing you alternatives. And the famous video that went around the other day of a woman complaining, I'm buying personal items. How the fuck are you going to – you got to have a cashier check or bring that shit yeah. up? You, you ain't getting like, – Yeah, there's no privacy in a public store. If you want, If it's so private that they can't see it, then you should be buying it online. If it's so private, you should be wearing a fucking mask anyway, so no one sees your fucking face while you buy your fucking tampons, Karen. It's also, there's another side to that, though, which is that it should not be grocery store employees' responsibilities to deal with that. Because as people are getting violently angry over it, people are so mad because they've decided to politicize something that is not political it is objective you are killing people if you do not wear the mask but it's like grocery store employees have stopped trying to enforce it because literally they are not getting paid enough to care to be put at this risk is insane you cannot put these people who are being paid barely anything pennies you cannot put them at this risk they are at the front lines of this that's not what they sign up for that is not what they are getting paid for or what we talked about the other day when I went to the hardware store at Lowe's, I had to go to Lowe's two days in a row because I was working on something. I went to one and then another one down the road at neither store were employees wearing masks or gloves. The only employee I saw wearing a mask at all was one who was spray painting one of the displays to fix it because they had gotten scratched up and they were touching up the paint. None of them were wearing a mask. None of them were wearing gloves. None of them were socially distancing from the customers. 
they were just going about like it was a perfectly normal thing, talking right in customers' faces. Same, same with Walmart. I went, I've been there a few I times. Been to Walmart most, m- almost all of the employees are not wearing gloves. Most of them are wearing masks, but they're either pulling it down constantly, so it's useless. Uh, they're Don't putting pull it, it under your mouth. They're pulling the it if under you're their. A mask. They're pulling it under their nose, just having it under their nose. So guess what? You're just spraying mucus over the front of it. It's completely useless. Like that thing. That's what's so upsetting me is more than half of the people I see wearing masks are wearing them completely wrong, making them entirely useless. And that's and that's so much worse because it's like you're trying, but you are failing so bad. Yeah, and it's it. It, it it is so important that you not do that. Wear your mask over your nose. If it's got the little wire, press it down to fit your nose. In do fact, hold on. It... I have a mask right here. I can do an example. Do not pull it under your chin. I'm going to keep talking while Iggy does that. Do not pull it down under your you chin You take the mask. Hold on. Period. Hold on. Let me put my headphones back on. Yeah. You take the mask. Um, you place where... it like so. Do not touching touch the only the, the ear loops. Touch only the straps. Touching only the ear loops. And do not pull it under your chin. Do not pull it like, under your chin. At all. At None all. None of that shit. That's exactly what you should be doing. And then to remove um, just the ear loops. I would get Dispose up and if it's this type. Generally, I don't have enough access to other masks. But I am keeping this in a place where it is not getting... But also... Any kind of cover. While wearing your mask. You know, don't pull it down. Don't... I'm... I want to real quick get my mask first of all because I really like. It. You've seen my mask. Yes, right? yes, I have. It's a good one, uh, but I'm not wearing pants, so if I get up, y'all, I'll see my thighs, and nobody wants that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, but um, I want to give a shout out to a couple of companies that I think were doing very well by their employees and customers. One, Taco Bell. I don't know if this has happened at your Taco Bell. But instead of handing you handing them your card, they are handing their machine out, and you put the card in, and then they do that again afterwards, so that you never yes. touch. Yes, and them. then they also they put the, the bag tray. on a tray, yep, and then hand you hand that out, so you can just grab the bag, and there's and no actual I'm, contact. Uh, another company that's doing that is called Freddy's, which mm-hmm. we discovered recently, and oh my god, they're good. We'd never been before a couple weeks ago, and oh my god, not as good as Culver's, which we found afterwards. But they're very, both very, very good. Um, they do the tray thing. Culver's has a very unique, like you can tell, this has been a long-term design of theirs. You pull up to the window and order, and then there's parking spaces in front of the window where hmm. all the cars pull up. They give you a card like you're at a deli. They oh. hang off your window. They come out the door, you pull up into a parking spot and then they bring your food out to you almost uh, like Sonic would. Hmm. And then you drive off. And I like that. Um, Which is the classic way to, to handle that. There's other also something you can do if you still want to interact with friends while still remaining socially distant. Uh, there's a thing called a trunk picnic now where you go. I've seen those and I'm not all right with them. I mean, not they're not. If you do them correctly, they're at least safe. Yeah, they are, but I'm it just I if you want to do that and you're doing it safely, by all means. Yeah. Go for it. It's just not for me. It reminds me too much of trunk or treat. Yeah. Or going to uh I, oh my god, you don't know this. You're from Seattle. Carowinds. Hmm. Uh, it's like tailgating at Carowinds because it's always like minivans and it's never like actual tailgating. Yeah. Uh, people would just go to like so Carowinds is uh giant amusement park owned by paramount on the okay. border with south carolina and north carolina and it's the place you go like for a day of fun uh that's they had a movie theater there at one point where you could see like nickelodeon and paramount movies before they hit theaters oh. so i actually saw uh, adam's family reunion and Harriet the Spy there. Similar to if you go on Disney cruises, you can see uh, Disney movies screened there before they hit theater theaters. Yeah, it's kind of the Paramount knockoff of Disney World. Okay. Um, it's big, big, big place. Uh, but 
you would see just a bunch of minivans parked out front with people eating KFC out of the back. And it was always the white trashiest thing I'd see. Mm, yeah. So it's hard I for feel, me to like. I, I'm surprised I have not heard of that place because I'm really big on like theme parks. I'm always yeah, watching like, up, theme park YouTubers. Uh, yeah, look up Paramount Scarewinds. It's right. A couple of a couple of YouTubes to watch if you're into theme parks, since we are still live streaming this. Uh, Defunct Land, which basically uh, does exposés on uh, discontinued theme park rides or theme parks specifically. They have a great one about the Nickelodeon Hotel that I would recommend. So check out Defunct Land by uh, Nick Perjurer, I believe his name is. Perjurer is okay. definitely correct. Nick, I'm not sure that's his first name and the other is uh not all of her stuff is theme park but jenny nicholson she's done breakdowns of star wars galaxy's edge and she's also done break a breakdown of um pandora the world of avatar which is at disney world and she will talk often on different stuff uh she also talked about uh there was this one animatronic buzzy from disney world that got stolen and so she did like a whole breakdown of that that one has a really sad ending that she does not mention because it had not come out by the time she put out the video because they weren't sure she had her predictions. Basically, Buzzy was this animatronic in Body Wars, which was in Epcot. Um, and he, he looked like a little kid in like a cadet uniform because he's like, oh, we're joining the Body Wars, whatever. It was just a cute 3D ride. Didn't go over super well because it made people super nauseous. Uh, and so it had been shut down for a while. And it disappeared, which because... Disney's like back areas are like really popular for urban explorers, like any of their empty spaces. Cause like yeah. if security finds you can just be like, Oh, I got lost something. It's like baby's first, uh, urban explo exploration as she says it. Somebody uh, recently said, what's the difference or what's the difference between, or no, no, what is urban exploration? And the explanation they were given was it's trespassing with the camera. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, um, but basically, that happened a lot, and so they got kind of a timeline of what was happening with Buzzy. Uh, he got red tagged, which basically means um, when they are going to clear out an exhibit and replace it with something else, they will put red tags on all the stuff that is going to the Disney archives, which is not like a public museum or anything, but that at least means that he would be saved. But then, he disappeared, and nobody knew where he was. Uh, his, like, hydraulics were, like like, cut. They weren't, like actually like unhooked and everything like they were cut like really jaggedly and it was pretty awful and nobody knew where he was the like they were trying to find him there were a few different places there was this one like urban exploration called backdoor disney on twitter and um he had gotten like really uh like vile with his stuff like he seemed really angry at disney over a lot of things so he had a grudge and like he was getting more and more weirdly violent and odd about it and, like, the stuff he was getting, he was, like, getting props and things that he basically was stealing from Disney. Um, and then he posted on Twitter, and this was after Jenny's video, a picture of Buzzy's head with the eyes scratched out on his bed. So he got Buzzy. And it's wow. really, it's it's a really disturbing picture. Like, I would not recommend I'm, searching it out. I'm like, good. it's it's just an animatronic, but it's it's really messed up. And um, it, it's sad because... <laughs> Her video ends kind of hopefully that he just went to the Disney archives. But yeah, that's what happened. Uh, Backdoor Disney did get uh, arrested because, not specifically because of that, but he got arrested for trying to sell props he stole from the Haunted Mansion. So he he did see punishment, but uh, yeah, unfortunately that's the conclusion to the story. I would still recommend watching Jenny Nicholson's video uh, it, it's just called Where's Buzzy by Jenny Nicholson. And she dresses him the whole time, which is fun. Um, so it's a it's a really good breakdown. It's basically like a video essay, but in more of a vlog format, since she, there's not really a lot of video footage to show or anything. Uh, but unfor it does have a sad ending, but um, it is still a very entertaining video. If you're, if you're at all interested in animatronics or strange tales of untold mysteries... Yeah. Well, I think we should uh, call it there. Yes, we're we're, we're definitely gone. rambling at this point. So Yeah, we're gone uh, two hours. That's pretty good. I usually yeah. try and do at least like an hour and a half to three. And uh, if you guys want to follow me, I'm going to move over to Bunny Bennett's stream, uh, B-U-N-N-Y-B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -T. 
mm-hmm. where she is playing uh, Puppet Master 2. Oh, yes. Bunny yeah. Bennett is a fantastic, fantastic uh, performer and has a great, great show called Movie Mausoleum. And also mm-hmm. you might know Bunny Bennett as uh, Rabbit, Rabbit from Steam Power Giraffe, which yep. she's really fantastic in that band i'm a little behind on their stuff although i don't think i've missed any of their albums have they done an album with zero yet they've got one, they're coming out with yeah, oh yeah 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 okay but they're coming out with another one with them because the last one me, i listened to was vice when Quadrant. I say i'm going over there i don't mean i'm part of the show i'm going to be in the audience yeah so. but yeah if you want to see what andrew's all about go check out at a- andrew d bench on twitter i put the d and Andrew D. <laughs> Go check that out on Twitter. Um, he streams from time to time. You know, when you when you get a chance, you seem to. But uh, it depends on if I've got something good. Yeah, and then before each major AEW pay per view, we we are doing prediction shows, so we'll do more of those. And obviously, you're on my Twitch channel, so you know, follow if you have not, because I would really appreciate. It. I'm trying to get to the 50 to get to the affiliate and all that. Uh, you can check out my YouTubes in the panels below. You can check out a schedule of all of my streams in the panels below on the browser version. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys uh, enjoy Double or Nothing if you watch it. And I hope you enjoyed this stream. So, yeah, thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bon oui to you all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hold on. I'm trying to find. There it is.